Good evening. Welcome to our Monday Thursday celebration. We are glad that we could be together. We are together in three different ways, or two different ways tonight. We are together live right here, and we have people who are joining us remotely on YouTube, and we are glad that we can all get together to remember this important event in the life of, and history of the church. Thank you for being here. I hope you got a copy of our worship guide. It will help you get through the service. It'll take you, tell you where we're going, what we're doing, and help you move from being an observer to a, from being an observer to a participant in worship. Uh, we just have a few announcements tonight before we get started. I want to let you know kind of the flow of the rest of the week. Uh, tomorrow, our Good Friday worship service will be held here in the sanctuary at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the Easter egg hunt for preschool and elementary age children will be Saturday at 10 a.m. And then we will have two identical Easter services here in the sanctuary at 8.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. on Sunday both uh, with communion, so hope we see you at one of those. We will be having communion tonight, and we need to talk about it a little bit. For those of you that are joining us remotely, please get something so you can have communion with us, some kind of uh, solid, some kind of drink, so you can participate uh, with that. For those of you that are with us, we have a different communion cup than we have had for a little while, and it's going to take some instruction. So if you look at it, I'll help you through. Let, I'll tell you the good news first. The good news first is everybody thinks the juice tastes better in this one, okay? So that's the good news, all right? The bad news, everybody thinks it's harder to open, okay? So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Because in so many of our practices, we had people spill this, including yours truly. Um, when we get to communion, we're going to do everything normal, but when we get to taking the cup and the bread, we're going to take the cup first and then take the bread. That doesn't undo what we're doing. I know some of you have never done that in your life, um, but it doesn't change anything, but we're going to do it because of this. And how we're going to do it is we're going to take the whole top off, we're going to drink the juice, then we're going to take the layers of the foil apart and get the tiny little bread out. The bread is small enough that you won't have a problem of getting it down without something to drink, um, but I just want to tell you that that is coming. And for those that are helping with the little ones, uh, they will probably need some help in that, so uh, if you could help them with that as well. Let us continue to worship the Lord.
Please stand for our call to worship. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This shall be a day of remembrance for you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. Jesus said, one who is bathed does not need to wash. In our baptism, we've been bathed by the grace of God, trusting in the steadfast love of Jesus Christ, who has delivered us from sin and death. Let us confess our sin. Join us in our corporate prayer, followed by a time of silent and personal reflection. Lord Jesus Christ, how well you know our hearts and still you love us. You have loved us to the end. We have denied you, and we have denied our calling to serve one another. We have betrayed you, and we have betrayed your commandment to love one another. Pour out your spirit of grace upon us. Teach us to love and serve you faithfully, and to love and serve one another by the example you have set for us. In your holy name we pray. Now, O oh Lord, transform us as we continue our confession in silence. Now the Lord Jesus Christ has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. Now the promise is fulfilled, and love's redeeming work is done. Friends, 
Believe the good news of the gospel. Let us now prepare our hearts for the reading of God's word with our prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Gracious God, feed us with your holy word and fill us with your Holy Spirit so that our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This evening's Old Testament reading is Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, which can be found on Old Testament page 58 in your pew Bibles. Please hear the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb at the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord.
Our New Testament reading and preaching text comes from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, and then 31b through 35. If you'd like to follow along in your Bibles, in your pew Bibles, that's on New Testament page 107. John 13, 1 through 17, 31 B through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, You also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Then going to 31b, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. So as I think about this scene, I really wonder if they're thinking, is it about time? Is this about to happen? If finally... Jesus is going to lay out his plan, his plan to lead a military conquest where Israel would rise up, overthrow Rome, and take their rightful place as the empire of the world forever. As Jesus rose from the table, were they thinking that? Were they tapping each other going, is it going to happen? Is it now? Some of them might have even been going, hey, here he goes. But it didn't happen, because this wasn't Jesus' plan. Instead, Jesus did the unthinkable. He took off his outer robe, tied a towel around his waist, and began to wash the disciples' feet. Let's talk about what this meant. In many societies in Jesus' day, including Jewish society, your outer garments told who you were. 
Jesus' outer garment would have indicated he was a rabbi, a teacher. It was a position of prominence. His disciples would have taken pride in that they followed and were led by this man. Taking it off would have meant removing his authority and his position. But don't worry, it gets worse from here. Next, he ties a towel around his waist. This is taking on the job of the lowliest of servants. He not only demoted himself by taking off his robe, but he went about as low as you can go with what he took on. And if he is their leader, where does that leave them? But the worst part, he was washing people's feet. Think of streets back in those days. They were gross. That meant feet were gross. Streets were almost always dirt. So in the dry season, feet would be covered with dust. If it had rained recently, feet were covered with mud. And let's remember, these roads caught a lot more than just dust and water. Animals went up and down them. You didn't stop to pick up the waste from your animal. You just left it there, waiting for someone in a Roman uh, sandal to come and step in it. If you have the expectations that Jesus' disciples have, you don't want to see him doing what he's doing. If your leader is that lowly, where does that put you? Jesus had transformed from the prestigious rabbi maybe even to as low as a slave. Often we know Peter is the one that pops off, that you know has uh, the mouth control problem. But here I think he spoke for everyone when he said, and I bet he said it in an angry voice, you will never wash my feet. Understand once again, the disciples are putting themselves between Jesus and his mission. Jesus has come to do this. He has come to do exactly what he is doing right now. And the disciples are against it. There was another scene in the Gospels where Peter said, tried to stop him from doing something, scolded him for talking about his death. Jesus said to him at that time, get behind me, Satan. Because anyone that gets between Jesus and his mission, anyone who tempts Jesus not to do what he has come to do, is being a Satan. Jesus has been demonstrating his true identity. He has not come to settle for lesser halls of power. He's come to lower himself to serve and to claim the highest prize, his rightful place in the kingdom that he's establishing. And if he tells Peter, if I don't do this, you don't have anything to do with me, notice the context. Notice that Jesus didn't say, if you don't let me do this. No, he said, if I don't do this. You know, so often we put Jesus in situations as if he was subservient. No one allows Jesus to do anything. But if Jesus doesn't do this, Peter and the others aren't sharing in what he is doing. If we don't allow Jesus to do this, we aren't sharing in what Jesus is doing. It was time to teach. So Jesus put his robe back on, took up his power and his position, and began to teach. And essentially he says to them, did you get what I was doing? I served you. Now you need to serve. All of this service is built off the love that Jesus demonstrated. Those that follow Jesus, us included, are now to go forward in love and service. There are several churches that actually do foot washing services where uh, the, the congregation washes each other's feet. I in no way am here to take shots at them. Please don't hear me saying that. But I'm not sure it accomplishes what they want. 
See, Jesus is providing for a real need. Sure, it's got some metaphor in it, but it's also a real need that they have. We don't need anybody to wash our feet in our society. We do need to serve our world, and our world needs us to serve it. Every once in a while, you'll meet a real theology nerd, someone that pushes everyone to understand Jesus the way they do. Some of them can be really demanding, but if they don't demonstrate love, they're actually kind of a bore. They might intellectually know Jesus, but do they really know Jesus? The message of tonight is respond to Jesus' acts of love with acts of love to our world. If you are asking yourself, well, what would that look like for me? And if you can't figure it out yourself, don't feel bad about that. I really ask you, come and see one of your church staff. There are few things we enjoy more than helping people when they're struggling with seeing things through. We would love to have those conversations. What does it look like for you to find your place to serve? And if you do find your place to serve, I'm gonna tell you two things that I absolutely guarantee are gonna happen. People are gonna be blessed by what you do. People are gonna be changed by it. And the second thing is, nobody is gonna get more out of it than you do. When you serve, when you follow Jesus in this way, you come back and you're like, you know, it, it didn't even feel like I was really serving. It, it, it was that easy. It was that great. They need it, but we need it too. Know Jesus. Be washed by Jesus. And wind up being changed and turning to our world and serving it in its place of need. Let us pray. Jesus, our feelings are different than your disciples' feelings. Um, But there are things that we don't like it when you do either. Lord, help us take this to heart. Help us be washed by you and be able to serve our world. We have a world that has all kinds of needs. Let us be drawn to them. Let us have transforming experiences, and let us come back to our church, come back to our people and say, I got to do this really cool thing. This was amazing. Let let us have those kinds of experiences, Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join me in standing as we affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you haven't already, please sign in on the fellowship pads and pass them down your pew so that everyone gets a chance to sign in.
Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please join me in praying the way Jesus taught his disciples to pray, by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are invited to this table to commune with Jesus, to be empowered for our mission to be washed. Um, At the end of the words of institution, I will uh, once again explain how we're going to open our communion tonight, how we'll go forward with that. We'll have plenty of time, so don't worry about that uh, at all. And if you find that it's too difficult for you, it's a nice congregation. Somebody around you will help you out. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, filled with my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord, until he comes again. Okay, so now get that cup out, or those at home, please get your cup and your solid that you're eating. And what at first do, you might have to bend it down to break the plastic on the tip. Once you've broken the plastic, hold all of the foil and peel the whole thing off. The wafer should stay in the top. This is Christ's blood shed for our sin. Now, if you can separate the foil from the plastic... And again, if you're having trouble, ask for help. This is Christ's body, broken for us. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we are thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus. Give us the grace to fulfill the commitments we have made during this supper. By the power of your spirit, reveal to us the mind of Christ so that we may understand the gift you bestowed upon us and proclaim the message of your gospel to the world. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
If you need to talk to somebody, we always have elders on duty. Uh, tonight, they are Fleetwood Fleming and Russ Robinson. They will be up front here if you need to talk about anything uh, related to understanding what it means to be washed by Jesus, what it means to follow him and to, and to serve our world as he served our world. They can talk to you about that. They can talk to you about what it looks like to become a member of this church or anything else that you need. We are here for you. I hope you consider attending uh, the other services we have this week as we move towards Easter on Sunday morning. Um, our most sacred um, experience in the Christian life. Jesus looked at his people and he said, you need me to wash you. You need me to make you clean. And then after I make you clean, you need to go out and do the stuff that I do. Our world needs us. We need to serve our world. There's something in us that has that need. Follow Jesus into whatever he has for you. Be a gift to Gainesville, Florida. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine round about you and bring you hope and bring you peace. Amen. Hey, buddy. How are you? Become part of a community that seeks to glorify God, to make disciples of Jesus Christ, and meet human needs. Join us at First Presbyterian Sundays at 8.30 and 10.55, or watch us on My 11 every Sunday morning.